everyone is talking about what exactly generative AI will mean for India. This is a session in the form of a dialogue, uh, which is coming up. And for that, we have two gentlemen, Vijay Basu, he's a senior director, AI and analytics at Cognizant. And we've got Raj, Raj Bhatt. He is the CEO at Knowledge Foundry. Both of them will talk about generative AI and India. Over to you guys. Thanks, Samir and Baskar for the introduction. So myself and Raj today will be talking about um, examples of how generative AI is being used in India, the AI for Bharat initiative and Bharat GPT. Besides that, we will also look at what's the future of generative AI in India and does India really need its own large language models? And finally, if we have time, we'll quickly debate about will data scientists truly get replaced by prompt engineers? So over to you, Raj. Thanks, Vijay. Uh, and let me first start about uh, talking about the AI for Bharat initiative. It was an initiative uh, started in uh, 2018 by uh, four professors, two from IIT Madras, one from IIT Kanpur, and one from the Vadwani Institute. And they've carried that forward and other uh, researchers have joined that initiative to truly make it a, a pan-India kind of initiative. It's based in IIT Madras. Uh, they got a grant from uh, Nandan Nilikani and that's where they're based. Their work spans across translation, transliteration, speech recognition, language understanding, language generation, and text-to-speech. And let me talk a little bit about the few models and the few databases that they have published. Mm -hmm. For translation, they have an open source data set called Samanantar, which spans 12, 12 Indian languages. Uh, they have a model, uh, LLM model called Indic Trans for translation. Then transliteration, which is basically changing of words from one uh, script to another script, from Devanagari to, to say, Kannada script or, or to English script, for example. They have data sets and benchmarks. Uh, they have a data set called Aksharantar, and they have a model, a large language model called Indic XLIT. And this is for 20 different languages. I encourage everyone to take a look at it, uh, to take a look at the models and the data sets. It's available at ai4bharat.iitm.ac.in, so on the IIT Madras website. Then for speech recognition, they have nine different languages they've done work. Open source model is called Indic Wave to VEC. And likewise, for language understanding, they have Indic BERT and language generation. They have a language generation model called Indic BART, which is as close as it comes to LLM and generative AI. Yeah. Of course, uh, all these are, many of these are in the open source. So everyone's welcome to take a look at it and build products on, uh, on top of that. Uh, let's talk about how some companies have been using uh, these models and, and building products for Indian companies. Over to you, Vijay, to talk about uh, uh, Bharat GPT. Thanks, Raj. So um, Bharat GPT is obviously a chat as a service, you know, just like chat GPT, it's something that's unique um, and for the customers and users of India, a uh, company in India has built and so it's a in India for India kind of a story that we have uh, similar to the chat GPT. Uh, there are multiple places where this has been deployed, uh, you know, primarily one would be is Ask Sarkar, which is about, you know, where people can ask queries to the government in specific areas and get feedback from, you know, in, in a uh, chat format from what the government is doing and where, what services can be made available to them, what are available online, what are available at door to step delivery kind of. So that's uh, an area that's been used by the government of India. Uh, the other one, obviously, we all use train, you know, train travel, we use IRCTC to book tickets. Uh, we have seen the Ask Disha um that's available there for chat uh, queries so that's been enhanced with this Bharat gpt uh, which is a great example of um, you know ability to be able to book in multiple indian languages currently it's at nine we'll go up to 12 and given india is a very large you know set of diverse languages that we speak right from the north to the south to east to the west it is very essential that we have ability to be able to um, have large language models that support in indic languages 
So the other areas that you know uh, that has also been used is the state uh, road transport corporations where they are using the this Bharat GPT to be able to provide real time updates um, to the uh, users of our the bus journeys so that you know they can find information about where the buses are, what time their departures are, and they can plan their travel according to that. So there's a lot of work happening in, in the Bharat GPT space. Uh, besides that, I think additionally, I would say, you know, there was the whole AI strategy that was kicked off by Niti Aayog in 2018. And as part of it, one of the key things that was looked at was, you know, how do we make ourselves self-reliant? And um, with generative AI now becoming very popular, we need a lot of supercomputing power. And um, the Ministry of uh, IT has recently just launched the um, supercomputing specifically dedicated for generative AI called Aravat, uh, which is a step in the right direction for us to be able to, you know, productionize large language models specific to India um, for our use cases. Uh, NASCOM, in partnership with uh, multiple industry leaders, has uh, also, you know, this is a very difficult thing given the regulatory issues around AI. So they have put together guidelines on generative AI, which is a, which is a very a good thing because now we will have certain guardrails around which we can leverage to be able to guard the privacy um, of um, the data that we will have. So this has come out from NASCOM and uh, my hope is that all of us will use and leverage this going forward. Raj, uh, you want to talk about the future of generative AI in India? Yeah, I think, um, uh, thanks Vijay for that overview of what is happening in the industry. I think the future for generative AI is, is already bright. I think uh, what you described in terms of how the railways and the Indian government and the banks and the road transport corporations, everyone's using it already. And the future is even brighter uh, because uh, I think uh, there might be in, in these chatbots and, uh, you know, in the underlying databases that are getting created, we are laying the foundations for the future. Right now, a lot of these chats might still be very structured. You know, they might op offer you some options and you have to go through those options or specifically uh, ask, Disha will ask you, where do you want the train to originate? Where do you want to go, et cetera, et cetera. In the future, imagine a future where these are uh, models which are, you know, uh, truly chatty. You know, they're, they're, they're really intelligent and you can go into IRCTC and say, hey, Disha, I need an overnight train from SBC to MAS. What are my options? And it truly understands what it means, creates a SQL code, uh, converting from whatever language I'm talking in, and then throws out the options available. That's a real possibility, right? So not so that's just an example, but I can see all those kind of possibilities, which are domain specific, but yet are very intelligent. Uh, coming up in the future and all all the company that is behind this chatbot needs to do is up, update the language model at the back end and uh, let it loose and uh, people will start interacting uh, with that model and uh, that will truly be when uh, generative AI would have come of age in, in India. Thanks Raj. I truly believe that also. I think uh, India is at a stage where given its large population and large set of uh, users who are still untouched by AI and technology, um, this has the potential to truly transform from a B2C standpoint and touch customers in tier two, tier three cities um, and with large language models being in a, in a language that they can understand, be it Hindi, be it um, any of the regional languages it will transform the experiences examples of around agriculture right when let's say a, a farmer in in a remote village is able to use chat, kind of a Bharat gpt chat gpt in the language that he understands to find what's the best crop to um, sow for the, for him to get the maximum yield what's the weather patterns uh, so those kind of revolution i believe will be driven through this technology and we will leapfrog as an organ you know as a country um, using this uh, technology. So it has a huge potential from an impact standpoint that it can create um, in multiple fields um, in, in the organization, in the country, uh, for multiple organizations to leverage this and build solutions that are unique to India uh, to truly demonstrate the impact of uh, ChatGPT. 
So um, we'll quickly talk about uh, a very hot topic that there's always a big debate around. Hey, will uh, prompt engineers replace data scientists? So, Raj, you want to briefly touch upon it? What, what's your thoughts? Sure. So Vijay, my own opinion is that um, it will, it may start replacing some uh, data scientists in, in some areas. And uh, for example, NLP used to be a hot topic, you know, a few years ago, and people were leveraging BERT to do their own custom modifications for, say, legal contract documents versus some other uh, areas. So there was a lot of work happening in NLP. And before that, you know, the entire area of uh, entity extraction and similarity scores and all of these, it was a hot area. Uh, but uh, since chat GPT has launched, everyone's, nobody's talking about that anymore. And suddenly you find that everyone's focusing on prompt engineering instead of uh, you know, building any truly uh, path-breaking new NLP model. So, uh, or they're just fine-tuning existing LLMs, you know. But then I think there still is a role for data scientists. The fine-tuning of the LLMs is a role that truly data scientists will have to do. Likewise, as, uh, you know, uh, there are foundational models which touch up on images and video and other areas, uh, one might think, oh, maybe computer vision models and computer vision scientists will also be threatened. But even there, you know, there will be a lot of work required to fine tune models, apply it to specific areas and use them. That's what I think. Vijay, what do you think? Well, I, I think, see, um, with every new technology wave, there are going to be roles of the future. And, um, and data scientists, I, I don't believe will get replaced to a large extent. They, there is going to be still an opportunity where, you know, they will complement. I think you know they'll work together uh, because data scientists possess a much larger, broader skill set. You know, right from data manipulation to feature engineering to statistical analysis. Um, whereas prompt engineers are much more about optimizing the prompt design and the architecture around AI uh, language models uh, for like GPT, right? So they will collaborate and partner together. Um, in, in my opinion, in the long run, um, some roles may roles and responsibilities may overlap. Um, but uh, it's a joint effort at the end of the day to be able to build solutions that uh, organizations uh, would need to deliver for the customers that they serve. Um, so it's an evolving field. Um, and, and I'm sure folks in the tech industry are extremely um, savvy in terms of learning new skills. So anything that happens, everybody will upskill, cross-skill, ensure that they stay relevant. So it's an evolving journey for all of us. So that's... Uh, all that we had for discussion today and thanks for the opportunity uh, for us to be able to share our thoughts and views uh, and thanks raj for being a great uh, partner on this uh, talk thanks Vijo, and thanks 3a thank you so much gentlemen uh Vijoy and raj uh, baska your viewpoint <clears throat> i think very crucial uh, the whole aspect of bharat gpt and contextualizing uh, models for the indian uh, setup I think that is very, very important. But at the same time, I think what they rounded off with, that also is a key point. There is a lot of buzz today about prompt engineering. Uh, as rightly pointed out by Raj and, and Vijay, I think it's a short-lived phenomena. End of the day, you need the right data scientists to fine tune your models. You need some data engineers to be doing some of the heavy lifting at the back end of what is required to even drive these models in the first place. Uh, so, so these are emerging things that are there, but uh, relevance of, of human beings as co-pilots to any system that we develop uh, will remain.